When is a death in combat not a combat death? The president's Pentagon chief takes pains not to contradict administration policy in Iraq. This is Special Report. Good evening. Welcome to Washington. I'm Brett Baer. There is confusion tonight about what the Obama administration policy on combat in Iraq really is. The president has said there will not be any. Today, the Secretary of Defense acknowledged otherwise in describing the death of an American serviceman. National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin is at the Pentagon tonight with the latest. Good evening, Jennifer. Good evening, Brett. The Pentagon has released the identity of the first American soldier to die in Iraq since U.S. troops withdrew in 2011. Master Sergeant Joshua Wheeler of Roland, Oklahoma, 39 years old, a decorated elite commando assigned to U.S. Special Operations Forces at Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He leaves behind a wife and four sons. His friends say he was a legend among the Army's Delta Force. He had 11 bronze stars for valor ran to the sound of the guns and he stood up and and all the indications are it was his actions and that of one of his teammates that protected those who were involved in breaching the compound and made the 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 mission a successful he was killed while helping Kurdish forces rescue 73 hostages at an ISIS prison in Hawija. The Pentagon says he died from enemy small arms fire, but has refused to say he was killed in combat. Quote, it is important to realize that U.S. military support to this Iraqi rescue operation does not represent a change in our policy. U.S. forces are not in Iraq on a combat mission and do not have boots on the ground. The White House and Pentagon have been reluctant to say this American soldier died in combat because the president promised no combat, no ground troops in Iraq. I want to be clear. The American forces that have been deployed to Iraq do not and will not have a combat mission. As your commander-in-chief, I will not commit you and the rest of our armed forces to fighting another ground war in Iraq. Today, the defense secretary faced tough questions about where a support mission ends and a combat mission begins. He finally admitted what everyone knew. This is combat, things are, are complicated. This is someone who saw the team that he was advising and assisting coming under attack, and he rushed to there to help them. Master Sergeant Josh Wheeler will come home tomorrow. Defense Secretary Carter and his wife will be at Dover to meet him. The Pentagon says since he died during a named mission, Operation Inherent Resolve, the fight against ISIS, Master Sergeant Wheeler is entitled to combat death benefits and eligible for combat awards, even though the administration says he didn't die in combat, Brett. Important. Jennifer Griffin, live at the Pentagon. Jennifer, thank you. Former IRS bureaucrat Lois Lerner is in the clear tonight. The Justice Department says neither Lerner nor anyone else from the tax agency will face charges over the targeting of conservative groups. Correspondent Peter Ducey is here to tell us about that. Good evening, Peter. Good evening, Brett. The Justice Department does not think Lois Lerner deserves to go to jail for singling out conservative groups that wanted tax-exempt status during the 2010 and 2012 election. And that's because the feds say out of more than 100 witnesses they interviewed, including some IRS employees who don't like Lois Lerner and some who identified themselves as conservative, nobody ever accused her of having a political bias when deciding which groups deserve scrutiny and which do not. Remember, though, Lerner did apologize for this targeting and called it inappropriate in 2013. These new findings come in a letter to Democratic Congressman John Conyers Jr. and Republican Congressman Bob Goodlatte. Goodlatte said tonight, quote, at every turn, President Obama and administration officials have repeatedly and publicly undermined the investigation into the IRS's targeting of conservative groups. Yet, today's announcement from the Justice Department is still very disturbing. This letter also includes an IRS explanation about why conservative and Tea Party groups were getting so much unwanted attention from the tax man between 2009 and 2013. It's because there were just a lot of them. 70% of the 500 applications for tax exempt status reviewed belonged to right leaning organizations. On top of that, the feds found evidence of mismanagement and poor judgment, but they write that, quote, Poor management is not a crime. 
Further, the feds are also letting Lerner off the hook for the mysterious disappearance of her email archive, saying the IRS backup system was set up poorly, so they can't prove she actively tried to conceal her electronic records. And she's also been cleared for using expletives when writing about conservatives and demeaning them, like this, quote, so we don't need to worry about alien terrorists, it's our own crazies that will take us down. The DOJ thinks that kind of talk on a work email handle represents poor judgment, but since she never mentioned trying to harm that group because they lean right in that message or in any of the one million documents analyzed, there's no criminal intent, so there can be no criminal charges. Brett. Okay, thanks for the update, Peter. Stocks were up today. The Dow gained 158. The S&P 500 finished ahead 23. The Nasdaq was up 112. For the week, the Dow gained two and a half percentage points. The S&P 500 was up just over two. The Nasdaq finished ahead almost three. Government investigators are blaming the Environmental Protection Agency for the three million gallon wastewater spill that fouled rivers in three states this summer. Engineers from the Interior Department say the EPA team rushed its work at the Colorado Gold Mine. They say the EPA failed to consider complex engineering, triggering the very blowout it had hoped to avoid. What is being billed as the most powerful hurricane ever in the Western Hemisphere is bearing down right now on Mexico. Let's check in with meteorologist Rick Reichmuth at the Fox Weather Center in New York. Good evening, Rick. How are you, Brad? I tell you what, you know, we're used to these incredible storms in the Western Pacific, places like the Philippines and Taiwan, and that's where all of our strongest ones have been until here. Hurricane Patricia had a, a pressure of 879. It's incredibly low. If you follow that sort of thing, it gives you a sense of exactly how strong this is. Uh, and it strengthened very, very quickly. It's also moving very quickly, and ultimately that will be good, new, uh, good news for us here. Uh, but the storm getting very close. Take a look even a little bit closer in here. There's many Manzanillo, there's Puerto Vallarta, and I think we're going to thread the needle right in between those two places. The winds for this, we have hurricane force winds that extend out only 35 miles from the center, so maybe up to around 70 miles uh, total across this area. Between Puerto Vallarta and Manzanillo, 110 miles. So we might get the worst of it to go in between and not into these bigger population areas. That said, the towns that are in here are going to take a beating from this really quick moving obviously incredibly strong storm. Winds are now at 190 miles an hour, uh, and it will make landfall in the next hour or two right here along the coast as a Category 5 hurricane. And then it's going to quickly weaken as it moves over the mountainous terrain of the Sierra Nevadas and moving very quickly up here. You see that little L right there? It's an area of low pressure by tomorrow evening right there towards the Texas border. So take a look at this future radar shows. Very heavy rain, 8 to 12 inches uh, all across this mountain range. Heavy rain in towards Guadalajara. And then by the time we get in towards midday tomorrow, the center of this, you see this little spin towards Monterey, Mexico, and then that moisture is going to get pulled in towards eastern areas of Texas, where we could be seeing some 8 to 12 inches of rain, and that will cause some flooding. Brett. Hey, Rick, really quickly, there's no chance this thing jets over and reforms after it breaks up in the, in the Gulf of Mexico. Yeah, great question. I don't think that's the case. The upper level winds are going to break it apart and that mountainous terrain should break it apart. That said, there are some indications if it stays closer, we'll see some sort of an area of low pressure here that will funnel some more Gulf moisture and moisture from that storm towards that area. But I don't think we're going to be looking at a tropical system in the Gulf that is related to this hurricane. All right, Rick, as always, thank you. Up next, Dr. Ben Carson gets a very good prognosis in Iowa. First here, so some of our Fox affiliates around the country are covering tonight. Fox 30 in Jacksonville, Florida, where legal bear hunting resumes tomorrow at sunrise. The state is authorizing about 3,000 hunters to help reduce what it says is an overpopulation of bears in human populated areas. Wildlife advocates say it is unnecessary and they're staging protests throughout the state. Q13 Fox in Seattle covering two Spokane teenage brothers who've been arrested for allegedly running an underage prostitution ring out of their mother's house. Police say the boys, 17 and 15, used girls as young as 14 and assaulted some who refused to cooperate. This is a live look at Austin, Texas from our affiliate Fox 7. The big story there tonight, two police officers conducting a traffic stop decided to break the rules. The officers found a man living in his vehicle with three small children, none of whom had a car seat. Instead of writing him a ticket, they took him to Walmart and bought three seats. The police chief says he's proud of his officers. That's tonight's live look outside the Beltway from Special Report. 
We'll be right back.